hello everyone and welcome back. Uh, I'm actually starting up the Undernight interview series again. The first person that I'm going to be speaking with today is Jake, aka Big Horny. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, yeah, my name is Jake. I go by Big Horny, but nobody really calls me that. Hmm. Uh, I live out in the mountains of Southwest Virginia. I've been playing fighting games since about 2017. I started with Exord. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, you kind of told us a little bit out about yourself outside of Undernight. Uh, do you have like a surprising fact that you could give about yourself? I, I guess one thing could be I'm kind of like a very naturally clumsy person, okay. uh, like comically clumsy. Like I just don't have any grace, like kind of just trip over my own feet <laughs> pretty much. It's interesting because like I've seen you at events before and like your your gait, this is maybe a little weird, I'm sorry, is like pretty <laughs> uh, cal calm and collected. It doesn't seem like you... Uh, oh, like it's an act. Oh, uh, okay, okay. It's an act. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you mentioned that you played Exert. What character did you play in, in that? Uh, I played Dizzy in that game. Oh, Dizzy's cool. Uh, I have yeah. a good friend. I'm going to shout him out. Sorry. His name is Drifter Dane. Uh, he made the switch oh, from yeah. Batman to Dizzy. Um, he was the one that actually got me started. Him and Ghost got me started writing notes and taking notes for uh, fighting games and things like that. But mm -hmm. um, I'll ask you a follow-up question to this first one. Uh, what would you consider your hobbies to be outside of fighting games? Well, honestly, I, I kind of just, I try out a bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. right? Like, uh, I've tried, like, getting into making, like, music or, like, digital art, 3D modeling. I kind of just, my hobbies kind of come and go a lot of the time. I just try out a bunch of stuff to just see if it sticks yeah, I, uh, I'm kind of more of a guy that uh, explores hobbies within the thing that I'm super passionate about. So uh -huh. it, it's hard for me to sit still. So like, you know, I would be running team tournaments. I'd be trying to talk to people about certain things like uh, this interview series. Uh, I've done interviews for like school and thing. And I, I liked doing that. So that made me think like, well, you know. If I like talking to people, then why not just interview them too? So uh, my hobbies kind of get uh, wrapped up in all of that too. But uh, we'll go ahead and transition into the next question. How did you get into Undernight? I I was introduced to it by friends who played it back in the L, mm -hmm. and I played cross tag. And briefly before ST came out on Steam, actually, I was actually messing around on EL with buddies mm -hmm. like that summer before it got announced that it would be coming to Steam. Mm -hmm. So I played for a few weeks or so, and then the game got like ST dropped on Steam like a couple months later or something. So that was perfect timing, basically. Yeah. Okay. Very convenient timing. Uh, I've been a long stay. Uh, I've been playing since EL, but it's cool. I think Silent as well uh, ended up really digging into Undernight after playing Cross Tag. Um, what team or like what characters did you like in Cross Tag? Um, I originally I played Hide Rachel. Uh, another Rachel enjoyer. I love that. Yeah, character. I'm. I'm. Yeah, that's my boys' blue character, but. I played uh, Hyde, and when Carmine came out, I played him in that game. He's pretty cool in that game. He's, like, really yeah. messed up. Yeah. But uh, that's where I got some of my initial interest. And then uh, what would you say has been the thing or maybe the things that have kept you interested in, in Unity? From ST to now, it's been about, like, almost six years or something like that. Uh, yeah. what, what keeps you motivated in, in playing the game? I think it's a really unique fighting game. It's 
it is, it is like a really slow pace to it that over time I've really came to like a lot about it. Like, I feel like Under Night is the only fighting game that sort of makes me think about how things could change like 40 seconds from now. Like, because the timer is such a such a big part of the game. And at first, I actually really didn't like that. Like, I, I came from Exert, so the slower pace was actually kind of like a sore point for me in the game. But over time, I've really, really came to like it a lot. And just sort of the... How, how like, how well defense can be applied in another night. You know, these are just... I can't really get that experience in another fighting game that I can think of, for right? Yeah, it feels really unique compared to other uh, games. It can be a detriment to some who like mm -hmm. faster pace. And uh, just for a tiny bit, I wanted to dig into what you mentioned about the timer and like really future planning, uh, like future game states. That's a phrase yeah. that uh, Gosuda, who's really helped me with my thinking about the game, uh, drilled in on me. It's like, okay, this is happening, but like, what does that mean for the future of the round? What does that mean for the future of the game? You know, there are only mm -hmm. so many game states within cycles that you have to like, uh, make something happen within a round and so uh, at least digging around with that against higher level players like you and box of and things like that has kept me like really really interested in the game it feels like I it's cheesy but it feels like you kind of learn something new every time like when you encounter something that you didn't know before yeah okay so we're going to move uh, into our next question. I already know the answer to uh, the first part, but other people might not know. Uh, who is your main character in Undernight, and why did you choose them? So I play Chaos. Um, I actually originally picked him because I was interested in playing a puppet character. Because, I don't know, I was just sort of interested in the archetype, and... Back in that, that summer when I was playing EL, we were just looking for a game to play before then. And I thought about, you know, I could go back and play Zotto and Exert or something. But then we decided to mess around with, with EL. And in a different world, I probably played Carmine. But because I played Carmine and Cross Tag, I was like, well, let's try somebody new when I actually play Under Night. And Chaos is kind of stuck with me, so... Yeah, uh, when Akatsuki was added to BB Tag, I had so many people like asking me, like, "Are you gonna play Akatsuki in that game?" And I was like, "No, dude, he's totally, totally different." Yeah, like, <laughs> like, I like the way that you st uh, structure pressure, the way that like his buttons worked. I was like, "I, I can't do it. Like, I, I mm. I'm not gonna play him." Uh, it gave me the opportunity to play like Rachel because I didn't play Rachel in in uh, Blaze Blue. I played some simpler characters, Hibiki, uh, Jin, um, Tsubaki, like those sorts of characters, but Rachel uh, allowed me to explore an archetype that I wasn't so comfortable with. But um, to kind of follow with that, I again, I know the answer to this, or at least one of them, uh, but do you have any sub-characters? Uh, why did you choose your sub? So my main sub is Inkidu, right? Mm -hmm. The main reason I honestly picked him was he's a really simple character. He's just like a very fundamental undernight character. Doesn't really have too much going on, and I think that's it's a nice contrast from Chaos, who kind of does his own thing in a lot of ways. And uh, it's fun to kind of explore both sides. Kind of made me have to learn certain things about the game that you know i could maybe get around yeah. um also at the time back when i initially picked him up there was there were like nobody playing ink like it was like early 2021 like none of the st inks really stayed around and this is before everybody picked up their ink sub yeah but now everybody's got one of those so yeah, I know, like, Cart plays him. Uh, I 
dabble with Enkidu a little bit, but like he's maybe like my fourth or fifth character, just because mm-hmm. he is simple. He has some really like fun buttons to press. Like four yeah. C is obviously fun. I actually really like six B, or not six B, six C. No cancel. Yeah, six, like not charge. Yeah, six C. It's like probably my favorite button, honestly. It's a really fun button to mess with. Absolutely. Um. So for Uni two. We know about three characters, Surugi, Kaguya, and Kuon. Do you have any particular interest in any of the three of them? Or are you going to put any time into them? I don't currently plan on it. The two that that we were actually able to play in the beta, I didn't really have much of an interest in. Uh, Kuon is a maybe, just depending on how he turns out, but... As of right now, I'm probably just going to stick with my current characters. Okay. Yeah, I, um... When I first saw the characters announced, I thought, like, oh, I'm going to play Kaguya. Like, Kaguya looks sick, blah, blah, blah. And then, um... A small bit of it is spite. A small bit of it was when I started messing around with his buttons, I felt like there was something there. I, I felt this, the same sort of feeling that I felt when I picked Akatsuki. Um, but Surugi, I'm... I might even replace my main sub with him in the next version. Uh, oh, for really? people who don't know, my main sub is Horie. Uh I dropped Nanase essentially, um, but Surugi might take the second place and Horie might take the third. Potentially. I don't know. Um, but we're going to transition this into our next question. Um, Undernight. I think sometimes gets a bad rap about player expression, but I think that there are many ways that you can express yourself in uh, Undernight. So what would you say is your mode of player expression? Uh, What do you think your signature thing when playing Chaos or Inky uh, is? It's It's a bit of a hard question honestly i feel like uh i enjoy the like player expression part of fighting games a lot like it's probably my favorite thing but i really just like doing cool things with my character yeah and i you know i kind of don't or at least things that i find cool right i kind of don't know exactly how i would differentiate myself from other players like what i would define my play with like my signature so uh i can maybe get a little feedback uh give a little feedback for that because i've played i've played against chaos a lot over the the course of my time in undernight i feel like when i play you and when i watch you you hit people with like combos and stuff that I'm like, oh shit, I didn't. He can do that, or like, he has that much damage. Like I, if we play something randomly, like in ranked, or if we see each other, uh, sometimes I'm like, if I'm lazy, I'm gonna get hit by this thing, and like maybe if I play another chaos player, I'm not getting sent all the way to the corner, or like there's not Aussie extensions that I didn't think were possible that are hitting me. I'm like. Why did this guy hit so hard? What the fuck? Like, why am I in the corner? This sucks. Uh, that's my feeling, like, compared to Gosu or Silicon or uh, any other Chaos player I have. It's like, the routing decisions you make, in my opinion, like, stand out compared to almost any other Chaos I've ever played. Yeah, it's, it's a big part of, like, my, uh, I guess, theory behind... Like, I feel like Chaos is a character that can really pick his advantage state really precisely. Hmm. And, uh... He has, like, a lot of combo utility. And I think that that's, like, a very important thing in this game, to be honest. Because, like, characters can... You know, they're, they kind of can meet damage thresholds pretty easily. At least most of them can. Mm-hmm. So, like, the utility of the, of the route kind of stands out to me a lot like it goes a lot into my theory behind like my moving away of stancing on like almost every knockdown Mm -hmm. like picking like a safer means to to maximize my advantage okay yeah i 
so to explain for some of the people at uh, home who will be watching this, uh, Chaos has a parking stance in this version of the game. Uh, and for a while, I would say that the community's routing was really just to do sandwich, uh, you know, put Ozzy on one side, Chaos on another side, and then uh, run some traps and certain mix-ups uh, in contrast to how he worked in EL or even ST. Um, you kind of going away from that, I, I think in general, like Snappy and some of the other players have switched away from that. Uh, so it's interesting to hear you talk about that. Um, can you dig into that just a little bit more? Yeah, I I gave this a lot of thought and taking people to the corner because like, for example, like when Gesuda was sort of popularizing stance play back in early clear, there was more so of an emphasis between picking between stance or picking between like a neutral ender. Like, which that decision making is pretty easy for the most part, because you, if you don't want to interact with their Vorpal state, or if you can sort of use it as a grid decision, like, you know, sending them back full screen to neutrals, a pretty no brain pick, I feel. Yeah. But there's a lot of things that over time I've realized that you can kind of just do better in the corner than you can if you stance up mid screen. Like sense. if you're if you're like jailing, like if you're just sort of burning time, you can you have a lot more routes on the on your block string you can take in the corner. And it's far less like grid negative on average because stance is inherently grid draining, right? And that's before shields and things like that help swing it uh, towards... Yeah. Yeah, it gets even worse as things progress. I also think that corner, you get way better strike throw potential yep. in the corner. Because it's nice being able to stay on top of the opponent and like not have to dash throw. But honestly, I think I kind of prefer the dash throw rather than just sort of the reduced collision from stance yeah because uh the dash actually introduces some uncertainty uh, on the side of the defending opponent i feel the mm -hmm. same way when i'm running aqua pressure too it's like if i get a full head of steam um i can catch fuzzy jump with a certain string yeah. i can stand in place and kind of play a spacing game and so that introduces like okay is somebody going to do like 5b 5c is Chaos going to do like 5 BB stance or, or something like that? Versus mm -hmm. like, okay, that's another layer that somebody has to think about. Then you just run up and throw them and you reset that whole thing. It's really messed up. Yeah. Another sort of like hidden factor with stance is that weirdly, like if you get your throw teched in uni, like in the corner, the opponent's back is still to the corner, and it's on like a character specific basis as to if they have an easy side swap. Hmm. But if you get your throw teched in the stance, Ozzy's like stuck in stance. So, like, you kind of lose your, your most prominent like neutral threat, and you generally just end up having to freeze up for really long amounts of time or take like big risks on like a mash or a VO to reverse that situation because Ozzy will stay in stance for forever off screen, right? I didn't even know that. That's interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think with that in mind, I probably could have done some uh, better chaos countermeasures because I certainly wasn't thinking about that. Uh, mm -hmm. Speaking of countermeasures and other characters that uh, we play against, what would you say is the matchup that you feel the most confidence in playing? And why would you consider that your best matchup or your most confident matchup? There's, a, there's actually a handful I'm pretty confident in. My most confident matchup is against my own character, honestly. Like, I, I absolutely love bullying chaos. It's, it's very, <laughs> very satisfying. It's actually one of my favorite matchups to play, even on, like... You know, not the mirror. Yeah. So, like with ink or something. Uh, is it more of a situation where it's just like, okay, 
I know exactly what you're looking for. I know how to deny that. I know like what your tendencies are going to shift to. Is it more of that thing or more like, oh, I get to show off that I know more about this than you? Like where, what kind of angle makes you feel so confident in it? It's definitely more so the former. And I think that at like a at, on the really high end when you're fighting people who know chaos really well he's actually a bit hard honestly uh and i think that a lot of chaos players don't get like experience in that as much as they wish they could I can so see that. uh one of the things so so marion used to be my roommate he was a chaos from the midwest i don't know if he's going to play chaos in the next version um, but one of the things that I observed in ST and early clear is like chaos players didn't really, it didn't seem to me like they were very confident if you killed Ozzy and, uh, playing players like you playing players like Snappy and Gosuda, it's like, okay, I get to kill Ozzy for a couple seconds, but then I'm dealing with like five C, you know, two C, like all of these other normals that are still really good. Yeah. I'll add Trill in that as well. Trill, um, didn't play much clear but obviously an amazing player in and of its own right um mm -hmm. so i i think maybe that's kind of what you're you're getting at too like i i feel like fighting you without ozzy is slightly more annoying than fighting you with ozzy sometimes uh yeah i think there's there's a lot of uh it, it feels bad to kill ozzy sometimes because it's like i throw ozzy into you and i know he's gonna die and i just hold d or mm -hmm. something you know, I just gained two grid blocks and all that time you wasted. It's like there's a a lot of annoying decisions you have to make even when Ozzy is inevitably going to die. And that's that's actually something that's probably my biggest takeaway from Trill's play is somebody who I kind of feel like just uses Ozzy's death as his own neutral set piece. That's like a big part of the way I feel he approached the character back in ST that was rather unique because those like post Ozzy death like RPS situations, I feel like a lot of players sort of choose to freeze up. Like even even like Gasuda, I think he's a good example of this. It's like he'll be like, oh, Ozzy's dead. Like they're going to try to do like a dash poke and I'm just going to use it in farm grid. But gets caught blocking mid screen not necessarily a bad thing but not not really rewarding inherently either right oh uh, but yeah so it's basically something that allows you to use the death to trigger a point of attack for yourself as well it's like okay yeah i can hit you and string you up a little bit and then ozzy's going to come back by the time like i'm done with this uh depending on the sort of normals and things that you use that makes sense Mm -hmm. um what about the flip side of that what matchup do you think that you feel the most nervous about and what makes you feel so uncomfortable with it overall it's probably hide i think i don't like fighting hide on like chaos traditionally like hide players hate that matchup mm -hmm. and if you asked them to this day they still definitely would say they hate it but despite everything it's like hide can kind of void using orbiter and like the predictable ways that you sort of see it in other matchups and still be like kind of obnoxious like you still have to like it's still really hard to ever contest like backdash in certain situations like j6c is like a broken air-to-air -air normal i like, hate that normal oh, it's so God. annoying Damn. i get caught trying to air-to-air -air with him like i think akatsuki's like neutral jump c is is like quite a strong air-to-air -air normal and mine just gets obliterated it's like it has yeah. nanase's like head involved or something it's really dumb i don't like it like i'm getting jumped back like snipe from like almost half screen from like assault j6c it's uh and it's it's like the easiest hit confirm ever too so yeah you have so much time they just run up and then wreck and it's like uh, it yeah. feels demoralizing to get hit by yeah there's a there's a lot of little things with that matchup but 
in general, it's like with Ink, if I'm playing like a more simple character, like I like high gem is so obnoxious. That that move is it's so so crazy. Shout outs to Gosuda and Fox of for high gem. Isaac actually yeah. hates Isaac hates when it's called that, but it feels so accurate. <laughs> it it's very accurate. It's a gem explosion. Okay, so uh, we've named a couple players kind of as we've talked about the, the game here, but uh, would you say that you have a rival? And if you do, why would you consider them to be your rival? Um, I, I guess if I had to pick a rival or some rivals, I'd, I'd probably say like some of the Southeast players that have been on the come up in recent times like bb and deffy th those guys have like made me rethink the game more than like anybody else in recent years they're both like really they Go ahead, please uh they they're both like very very good like defensive players like they're they really know how to like approach on their night in like a a lame way like they they really understand how like how insane that you can minimize your risk reward in this game yep. and sort of leverage like different win conditions than just you know trying to kill people right yeah i feel like with bb um his like comfortability with like what characters options are even windows so like akatsuki is like really or the way that i play him it's like all timing based, all like kind of like mini setups. And with BB, it's like even if I feel like I have a good, like high percentage throw opportunity, I get that tech like 80% of the time. And it's just like these are the little things that help me kind of diagnose what players are doing. On the flip side with Defiant, it's like where he chooses to like bust out. And like where he chooses to mash or do some goofy ass option that like goes into some like long combo it's demoralizing in a different sense for him at least in the aka mirror too he's very elusive he uses his backdash like really well he uses neutral jump and those things like super well that makes it so annoying for me to start the offense that i want to start against him but uh what's been your experience against those two I would like for for BB like I think my my thing is that it's it Biakuya is surprisingly a very effective like timeout character in Zolder matchups. Like you think of him as like a set play killing character but everything he does takes so much time that if you you know, if you lose control of the timer for even a little while, there's a pretty substantial threat to have to deal with. Because, I mean, he has, like, the best reward state in the game, probably. Yeah, I would agree But he doesn't even have to capitalize on it in a risky way a lot of the time. It's like, space to be, make you, like, deal with the top web, burn extra time. And it's like trying to force like aggressive reads against a player like him, man, it 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 feels too way too inconsistent to like to really use as a strategy. Like I used to play like really aggressive and sort of just like force offensive interactions because you know he blocks a lot. You can catch him blocking a lot, but it kinda it's kinda like it doesn't matter. Especially mid screen, where like your one fuzzy mash 5A or like walk back and like whiff punish from just losing the having the whole game, yeah, flipped on your head. So I, I kind of play, I have to play really conservatively against against that kind of player. Yeah, I didn't like, oh, go ahead, please. Oh, you can continue. I was going to talk about Deffy. Oh, uh, I was going to say, uh, my games with DB, with BB as late has really been like. I'm looking at the timer, I'm looking at meter, I'm like, that first, uh, that first hit where Biakia doesn't actually set up a web is so important 
it's just like okay i i'm gonna make it as hard as possible for him to get to that 150 threshold uh but go ahead and, and expand on beat on Deffy. yeah i think Deffy is uh definitely more akin to what you said like he's more willing to sort of go for for sort of crazy random like reads or stuff sometimes like i'll be like fighting his hide and he's been dash blocking for maybe 30 seconds maybe i've avoided like one vorpal interaction and we got a second one coming up and it's like the most estranged like b reca ever just sort of flies out or like some 6-6-C that I'm like, I'm like maybe three-fourths the screen away and he does 6-6-C just predicting me dashing up and it works. So it's like, it doesn't feel good <laughs> to like get red like that. Um, I still think that they're both like, they both made me rethink the game a lot and sort of like how to approach it more lame, you know, sort of how to not have to take those like poor risk reward, like mid screen pressure opportunities to try to find like advantage in. But Daffy definitely is willing to to put it on the line a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. Those are two really good picks. Uh, I mean, I, I think also that if you're a player striving towards the the ends of brackets, your you know top 16s, you're going to be encountering them a lot. And the benefit is that already, like, they play online so much. So you yeah. almost always have an opportunity. So, like, with Uni2 coming, I'm definitely looking forward to duking it out with them a little bit more. Uh, but we're going to shift gears just a little bit into our next question. Uh, are there players that you have an eye on that maybe people don't talk about? Uh, players that you're like watching the growth of? Uh, players you expect to be on the community's radar here soon? It's kind of an awkward time because the new players who maybe picked up the game after seeing the Uni 2 announcement mm -hmm. haven't really had enough time to, to cook yet, right? Yeah. Like most of the there's no like serious up and comers just yet okay. and most of the players i think that i could point out i don't really think would be like too surprising like they've kind of been around forever now you know they've been playing like throughout the entire course of clear and i don't know i just i don't think there's a really really good pick for that i'd say like if i had to pick some some of the major standouts for me that I've played recently. I think his I think he changed his tag to I think it's like Vincent now. It used to be like Rhodes Carmine player. Oh um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh that's like a a somewhat new face that I'm like, hey wait a minute, this guy's actually pretty good that I noticed recently that I didn't really pay attention to before. Okay, yeah, I had the opportunity to play Rhodes a little bit. I think he, he plays a couple other characters too, but I did play the Carmine. I was like, this is surprisingly difficult. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, like this, getting this guy off of uh, off of cycles and things, like th there's like certain uh, flushers as some people like to call it. Uh, where you can bait certain options and make your life on offense easier. And it was kind of hard to dig him out of some of those resources that I was looking for. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, that's a good pick. Uh, we'll kind of take it back a little bit. We, I think we alluded to this a little bit uh, before in this next question. But do you have any player inspirations or people that you modeled your, your gameplay around or after? Uh, and then, like, in the community, do you have people that you look up to? Uh, this would be somebody like Imp, uh, or, or anything of that nature. Um, for inspirations, I would say... Most of my inspiration was from Shimazaki back in ST. Mm -hmm. Back then, I used to watch on their night, like, a lot. Yep. 
and that was sort of seeing that guy play was like my biggest motivation for for playing the character i really like like he, he did like a lot of custom combo stuff like he he had like really niche confirms and like chaos is like you can get pretty competitive damage even doing suboptimal stuff so it kind of just looked like just did whatever he what whatever he felt like doing and like the combo would just kind of work mm -hmm. a lot of the time and that that's like that's my pick there as for community members i guess i'd probably just probably pick tos just in general if anything um you know imp's been keeping the game on the radar a bit throughout clear with like the net play tourneys and stuff mm -hmm. yeah, I always go to shinobi's events yeah, shout out to shinobi yeah tournament organizers uh really help tunnel the lifeblood to many areas uh one of the things that i do like or it seems like this is the case is that the the main TOs that run uni seem to talk to each other they have like a good sense of like if we can manage not to let's not step on people's toes so you can choose where you want to go um i want to give a huge shout out you know max mode is is coming up next year uh but crossover arc which or excuse me not crossover arc well sorry including crossover arc but slashback which is being run by brett and that team uh, there's really like a lot of different events that you could choose from now um, that you're going to get high level competition and like high level uh, enjoyment out of so I'm even though I don't think that I can travel to any of those early next year uh, I'm definitely looking forward to watching and seeing what players are, are doing in those spaces so uh, we're gonna transition toward the end of our questions but uh, speaking of the end we're basically in the last like month or so of uniclear do you have any lingering thoughts or uh things of that nature about this version to share um it could be anything like do you have like a hot take or or something like that oh i would i would say I think most of my thoughts are more so how like uni 2 is ultimately gonna shift away from clear mm -hmm. and like i guess i could maybe mention something that might be left behind a bit with the new version okay we, we've talked a lot about the timer and timer centric play yeah and and st and clear as being like a very prominent thing but I kind of feel like Uni 2 is sort of moving away from timer play a bit because obviously it's easier to open people up now with the nerfs to like throw option selects and like the reduced tech window but also just how shield and concentrate also speed the cycle up so now you kind of have to play more Vorpal interactions per round like my observation playing was like i didn't really feel so much that i was rewarded for thinking ahead quite as much in the in uni 2 because the timer was almost never really a major factor in the games i played like it's very much so like a like a killing game as i've heard it described I think so too. Um, one of the pieces of feedback that I gave uh, was to decrease damage a little bit. Like I, I really like um, how hit stun changed. So like you can combo, like everything combos easier, like I feel. Um, and then like two AOTGs for almost every character in the game kind of helps extend things a little more too. But um, yeah, I, I kind of felt the same way some of the players that i played in the open beta uh weren't really at the level to force me to think a couple layers ahead but yeah. even when i was playing higher level players it was just like i'd look up and there's like 20 seconds left like like oh shit. Uh, i think some of that stuff might slow down as people get more conf 
comfortable with the the various options in the game but i do think it's trending more aggressive and more uh offensively minded i'm not sure mm-hmm. what to make of it yet but i i've tried not to like put too much of a thought myself into it um kind of on the other end of that um what are you looking most forward to in under night two? Oh, definitely just like finally having good net code that's the the absolute biggest thing for me yeah pretty pretty simple answer but it's gonna be nice to you know play the game properly yeah, yeah i feel the same way um so for those who don't know um when jake and i play i think Sometimes if it's really good, we'll get like a good three, but it usually tends toward like four, maybe five frames. Um, And you're one of the people that I do like want to play a lot of, but I would realize after a while, like even though we tried to play the cleanest under night we could, uh, there's some things that get away from you at higher delay. Um, Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to playing. I, I heard Fox have just got fiber. He's like another person that I would have liked to play more, but our connections didn't really feel too satisfying for me. Um, so yeah, netcode, pretty important one, to be honest. Yeah. Um, do you have any goals that you are either working toward now or in Uni 2? Are there some goals that you'd like to achieve? I would say that most of my goals I don't think are under night centered at the moment. I really want to, two things I, I guess I'm willing to share would be, one is I really want to try to to get into like another fighting game of sorts, just try to get good at like another one. Um, I've tried a lot of them. I've, I've never really gotten too far with just about any of them besides on their night. So I want to you know, give give another game a serious shot. Like maybe I'll do that in the downtime we have between Uni Two. Yeah, I and... think Grand Blue uh, is here coming out soon. That is like a slower paced fighting game. I thought that I would dig into that um, myself, but I I really didn't want to play another delay based game, even though the yeah. delay was good as far as I heard. So uh, it's one of the things that I I'm kind of looking forward to as well. Uh, but you had a second goal as well. Yeah, uh, I also kind of want to invest the time into a more creative endeavor. Mm -hmm. I've been sort of looking into doing art, particularly 3D art, learning Blender recently. And that's probably where a lot of my priorities will end up lying. Okay. That sounds good. So... Uh, we're basically at the end of our interview. Thank you again for taking the time out to speak to me. Um, this is less of a question, but I'm going to flash it on the screen. Uh, are there places that you have for us to follow you at? Um, social media or anything like that. And do you have any shout outs for people that you know uh, that may be watching? I really don't have any social media accounts that you could uh check me out at honestly i'm 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 open to people messaging me on discord but that's that's really about it like i don't really have any places where i make content personally Mm -hmm. and I, i i guess i don't really have any shout outs in particular nothing wrong with that well again thank you for taking the time out to speak with me today it's been a pleasure we've gotten almost 45 minutes worth of discussion out um this is really like the first time that i've ever gotten to have a lengthy conversation with you Uh, Mm -hmm. hopefully we can continue to talk a bit more at uh, some upcoming events that we both are at all right yeah it's been great i appreciate it